I liked the hyphy movement, man. I really did, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I think, you know, the reason why we're having this conversation, like, how could a nigga from the Bay Area even think to say something about the hyphy movement? You know, I think that just comes from a lot of people maybe being uh, irritated with maybe, you know, some of the gimmicky shit that came along after Mac Dre died. And then, um, you know, maybe even a nigga being a fan of mob music. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some motherfuckers, like, you know, they just wanted to hear mob shit. And I understand, and the hyphy shit might have been for the radio, but honestly, in my opinion, the hyphy music was just, you know, you know, when it came to the good hyphy shit, it was usually a nigga that was making mob music back in the day, you know, that just decided to make a goddamn uh, radio song. That's all it is, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, the hyphy shit, People don't realize, man, hyphy and crunk, they always try and say it's the same thing, and our response to that, nah, I, I, I don't really think so, man. I know a lot of niggas is ignorant and wasn't really, you know, knowing what they was doing, but, you know, you just a Bay Area nigga, you know, knowing that you got to get some kind of money, you know, you got to get some kind of spins, you know, so you was just doing some shit that they could actually play on the radio. That's all it was. You know, you was just, you know, you know getting over. But really, people don't know, man, hyphy was a motherfucker you didn't want to be around back in my day. Like, if someone says, they, oh, man, so you don't want to go there, that nigga's hyphy. You know, that's what it really was. You know, so when they say, you know, hyphy and crunk, you know, crunk is drunk. Hyphy is a motherfucking problem. <laughs> that nigga could say it all. <laughs> the first time you heard someone spitting gas. Bro, you had to ask that question, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> man, high school, brother. High school, I say summer '99, was when we was getting it in at the parks, you know. What school was that? Oh man, that's no, that's H Way. That's on the west. What high school though? Uh, Prospect High School. Well, you know, just so the people know, because you know, a motherfucker from the Bay, they'll know where you're from just from what high school you say. Okay, okay. West Side, we over here, we over here in Fremont, because that's where nigga had roots. You know what I mean? Came up, you know, got got his stripes fucking snatched off, but then I got him back, you know what I mean? So that's where I'm coming from. Oh shit, what happened? Basically, brother had to stay in a, in a domestic home, domestic abuse home for my mom's because she was, you know, she wasn't being treated right or whatever by whoever, my stepdad or whatever. So shit is real. Shit gets real and you get your... CDs stolen, you know, the crackheads want to steal. Oh, in the, in, in, in the homes? In the homes, man, and, and that's that's where I found my my uh, my passion for music because everything was taken from me. Yeah. You hear what I mean? So the fire, man, when you say fire, fire and desire, no, like, man, it really is. It's, it's fire and desire, man, for the music. Because music could take you to another place, man. Yeah, for you real. Could, you could be up in that that home or whatever, and just go like this, man. And then, boom, you in another place, man. So that's my gift to y'all. Put yourself in another place. Oh God. You can do it. First time I heard Mac Dre was uh, when I got back from, or well, when I moved back from. Uh, Bakersfield to the Bay Area, and I met these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga Ant and Chapadopoulos and a lot of cats that uh, I was balling with. Playing back, I played a lot of basketball. Was bumping Mac Dre, and yeah, when I heard his shit, I think it was at the park playing basketball. Somebody was bumping him at the park. It might have been this nigga. Who <laughs> <laughs> came up to Central one day bumping up? Uh, Mad Dre. And yeah, it was over from there. Shit. Ruthless by law. Yeah, RBL, man. I think that's when they uh they were just like all over CMC. I was like that's pretty much when everyone discovered who RBL was. They had too many hits. Snaps, classics. Yeah. It was um shit, I just Again, I used to listen to him. I mean, listening at my cousin's house. My, my cousin had, I would borrow all his, all his, all his music, man. He had RBL, IMP, Kuna. He had like, all of Get Low, Messy Marv, San Quinn. 
Everybody out there, he ain't ski. He had a sail ski, two tip. Those are all, you know, hitters, man. Dirty dog. All close. RBL uh, dropped that ruthless white law, man. They were just, I don't know, it was an everyday thing listening to them. Hell yeah. They were, they were like sewed up the whole game. The whole, everyone in the Bay was after that shit. Man, they everyone. didn't have it in their own. Take that, man, they slipping. You know, like, you're pumping shit down the street. Yeah, where People you used go? to park, uh, roll their windows down just to pump that shit. <laughs> and, and like, it'll go green and I'll slowly, you know, hit the <laughs> gas just to slap that song. Yeah, just so you can hear it. Everybody can listen. And shit, man. It was one of those things. Yeah, early 90s, man. You, you want to know about back then? <laughs> let, me, let me hear about the first house party you went to, how cracking it was. Ooh, okay. Man, I think the first house party I went to was probably the last house party I've been to, and I've been to lots of house parties, but yo, shout out to Chemo. Anybody that, that, that went to Santa Clara High or whatever, I went to Wilcox or whatever. I'm from East Palo Alto, but uh, you know, my parents moved us out to the 408, and I hated it when I first came out here, man. I really did, but uh, you know, I love everybody and everywhere now. The earth is my turf, but yo, back then, that house party was smacking, man. Dude had everything that you could think of to drink, number one. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was it was house party 101, seriously. Like, the motherfucker had, uh, you know, and it was 1995, going into 96 is a New Year's party, right? And, uh, dude had every kind of tree that you could think of. He had all kinds of different tree, you know? Back then, people were still, uh, you know, smoking Bammer, but he had hella bomb. He even had Bammer for the Bammer heads, but, you know, I didn't touch it. Never did, but nah. Um, he had all kind of champagne, beer, everything else, and uh, the music was great, most importantly. And uh, I, I, I never really been to a house party like that since, uh, 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 since then, man. Just sudden, that was just wide open. The host had every goddamn thing to think of, and the music was good. And most importantly, man, that was hoes. Tupac. Yeah, I mean, what girl didn't have a crush on Tupac? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he was definitely my favorite. Listened to a lot of his music, even from like digital underground days. So, you know, um, you remember the I Get Around. Uh, oh, I was about to say, yeah. Yep, yes. Yep. That was a good one. And um, but then later on, when he had when he came out with a uh, Brenda had a baby. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was deep. I was like, man, that's so deep, man. He's so he's so wise. He's so intellectual. It's just like you just you can't help but be in love with him because he's not just a regular rapper. He just had so much more depth to him. Um, I think that was the first first album too. Brenda's got a baby. When my homies call all that shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely had a Bay Area feeling. Yeah. So there was a lot of a lot of uh, attachment to him for sure. So when he passed, it was it was uh, it was a big deal. I don't think there was a dry eye in the room. It was a lot of us around. You remember where you were when he passed? Yeah, I was living in Fremont, uh, 13 years old ish, somewhere around there. And um, we were sitting in the living room, and it was like, you know, me and my sister, my brother, and the neighborhood kids. My mom's spot was the the spot to go to, so we was always chilling there. But old neighborhood, huh? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, yeah, they came in all, he passed, we heard on the radio, it was like, what? Yeah, that was like, uh, that was kind of traumatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the things, like, when John Lennon got shot, like, everybody remembers where they were when they got that Tupac news, mm -hmm. you know? I think we got it late, too, compared to when it happened. Mm-hmm. Tupac Shakur. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dog life. Hey, man, to me, like, it goes again like what our, our, our school or what hip hop is like you can't be no punk and be the best rapper out here man you know what I'm saying and we, we know what, what Pac is as far as like being a punk and all that we also know the way his ma music made you feel right. you know like there's no other rapper out there that can make you feel like Tupac could you know what I mean so you know everybody talking about who this that and the third is like they might have like real nice lyrics metaphors and all that shit but as far as like 
delivering and fucking soul. Like, nah, Tupac. Yeah, Tupac is, is the GOAT as far as rappers go. And, uh, you know, him being from out here has nothing to do with it. And I know they're all going to say, well, he was born in New York and he's raised in Baltimore. But, man, yo, I think he got his game from here. He got his game from here. Shoot, Master P got his game from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, Master P got uh, the game from here, too. Nip, Nip got his game from here. Shit, Short got his game from here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh... But, but real quick, because, you know, I do feel that there are certain artists in today's era. It's just, it's not, you know, the music that we came up with in the 90s and the music we have today is definitely, you can tell the label was involved because they push out the most microwavable stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, if you paid it, you know, or if you tapped into the underground, there's a lot of seeds Mm -hmm. That Tupac is planted in the next generation. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. you know, I'm. I don't think they have hit their dear mamas and their you know, uh, come with me. Yeah, or, yeah. Or uh, Mary. Yeah. I you know, but they they got those songs that are just in the like, are right, you? I can tell you studied off that book to come up with this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I won't I won't discredit the youth now, but nah, but nah, I, never I that. definitely say that Pac's influence. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I look at you funny if you tell me you ain't listening to pop, but you take Man, rap Pac, serious. Pac, you know what I'm saying? Pac's like the Jordan of rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like the Jordan. Where would you Where would you consider Biggie? Oh, if I was gonna compare him to NBA player or yeah, like like, like ranking? Hey, honestly, because yeah, you made the you made the comparison. Where would you put Where would you put Biggie? Was Biggie like a Larry Bird or a, um, or a, um, let me tell you, Biggie? As far as hip hop goes, ooh, I gotta go with that '80s class too. See, like a is that like a like a Magic or a, um, or a Isaiah, Dennis Rodman type. Of thing nah, like. nah, you know, I want to say he's like a, a, a Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? Thomas. Yeah, I want to yeah. say he's like Zeke. You know, you know what I'm saying? Real, real Pistons school. was. Smooth, smooth, tough, but, but I'm tough. Tough, I, you know, smart. I don't, you don't, you don't want to, yeah. Cunning, yeah. On okay. his toes, yeah. On his I'll toes, give you, I'll give on you his Z. toes. I give you Z. Yeah, because if I gotta go with the yeah, '80s yeah, era, like come, if you gotta, you know, compare the two. I gotta get somebody that got a chip. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I gotta get somebody who's cool, but Brooklyn, he's tough. Yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say Z. I'm gonna what say was your, Z. What was your favorite album, from Tupac? Probably the bootleg Machiavellis, <laughs> right. or or, or me against the world. Okay. <laughs> the bootleg Mac. Okay. That uh, what, what was it? We go to war, bus if we must. Secrets of war, the the uh, the one from the bootleg tape. So not the one All that right. they put out when he was gone. Like that shit was terrible. That shit. Yeah. That the way they did that man's catalog and shit when he was gone was just hella oh, bootsy man. like. Was, like, how come Spice One ain't on there? How come Fody ain't on there? Yeah. You know, like, how come Sibo ain't on there? How come, you know, the niggas at Richie Rich, how come they, you got Trick Daddy and Eminem on the shit? Like, come on it, it, now, it, it man. Start to, like I said, man, it, it, they tried to make him so commercial. Early 90s, know? 80s, 90s was like the real yeah. golden pot. Okay, this is hip hop at its, at its finest, at its purest. Mm -hmm. Once we got into the 2000s and the labels start to realize there's money in this, yeah. there's actual, like, we could push artists and stuff, that's when stuff became more microwavable. Now you get, now you get post-mortem albums with current artists that, y'all, bro, you wasn't even out of high school when this rapper was a, was around. So these, how are you going to get dudes, on the song with These dudes, hey, they really need to, like, just, just, uh, I hate to say anybody a hoe or anything, but know your worth, man. Like, just, you know, you got a little bit of chalupas or whatever, just go independent, man. Take that money for yourself. Fuck these labels, man. But, you, and the, the argument is, I don't know, the argument is for a rapper that is looking at money, it's just hard because I, I want to get on the radio and do all that stuff. But somebody who just looks at, the music for the art form, yeah, they 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 love the independent approach. Hey, Miles Davis and Billie Holiday used to make white people come to Harlem, bruh. <laughs> they be there. Yep. They be there. Come on, come on, yep. Susan. Yep, come yep. On.
we all up there. You want to know when I first got into rapping hip hop? Um, I would say with my uncle Jose. Jose, uh, they call him Chewy, Goonie. Um, OG from uh, Saxon, from, uh, from EPA, it's Palo Alto. Uh, he left this too short tape at home. So um, I went into his room, I started bumping it. Um, and I'm like, oh shit, cuss words. Um, life is too short. Yeah. It's um, a good ass album. I ain't tripping. All these songs, the whole album was bumping. Um, I just got hooked. I heard Freaky Tales. I was like, maybe like, I don't know, 12, 13, 13. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was just bumping that. Uh, bumping old school, old school um, hip hop, thump records, mm -hmm. type of shit. Uh, my uncle clowned on me too, man, because uh, I was bumping Sally, that girl. <laughs> and, uh, and fucking, my name is Salvador, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, he was like, he came in, he heard me bumping that, he go, oh, Sally, what's up, Sally? And I'm like, oh, fuck <laughs> you, oh, <aunt>, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> and uh, he, he was clowning and shit, I'm like, oh, man, you crazy, huh? And he told my other uncle and shit, they, they, they try to clown on me and shit, you know. Still to this day, what's up, Sally? Fuck you. That shit used to slap, <laughs> though, that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took it to the, you know what I mean? Um, don't touch my booty because I want the thing to do. <laughs> don't touch my booty because it's not the thing to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Sad. That girl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, I was just hooked on, uh, on rap from the beginning. Straight up. We have to go way back. So, I don't remember the year. I know it was the 90s. Man. The Bay Area rap scene was all I knew. I wasn't into any kind of East Coast, South, nothing like that. My whole rap, uh, like catalog, everything that I got was on, you know, cassette, Star Records, in San Jose. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the influences was just based off what my cousins had. Everything that they were bumping, Coognut, RBO Posse, Hell E40 good. in the click, you know, like even uh, Rich the Factor, who mm. wasn't even in the Bay, he was so, everyone was listening to him back then. Still. Dark Room Familia, they were out here <laughs> in the damn, uh, in the valley, and I was listening to them, like thinking they were from the Bay, and they were a bunch of gangsters from the valley. I still don't know where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was, you know, I just, but I listened to their, like, there were some of the early times, like, all this gangbanging stuff. What's that, what's that dude's name on, um, from Sacramento? Uh, oh, I forgot his name. I mean, from Sac to the Bay, it was, everyone was just, like, they were all from the Bay to me at the time. I was just a kid. Yeah. Rap music was Bay Area music to me. I didn't listen to anything but Bay Area, West Coast shit. You know, Snoop and Dre and the Dog Pound, DPG, they were my favorite growing up. Um, shit, man, Bay Area rap, hip hop, that shit was, it, it was a beef back then. <laughs> I couldn't right. listen to no East Coast shit back then because of the, the time I was raised with it. You came out, what, like around the time Pac and Biggie yeah. you know, passed away? When they, when they passed away, I was like deep into just like the whole West Coast and Bay Area rap scene. Like, yeah, cause we didn't, it was we everything didn't. to us. and Yeah. We didn't listen to them back then. We didn't. We yeah. knew about them, but we had to categorize them. There was, there was like in school, if you were in that group of listening to the East Coast, you know, you, you just wasn't with us. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. You, you was out, out there in the same field as us, but we don't get down with y'all because y'all just, y'all was all listening to the wrong stuff. And, and please don't touch my tape deck, you know? Yeah. Please don't, don't touch, put that shit in. Don't touch my talk boy, man. Yeah. <laughs> I used my to push the talk boy to, 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 to class because all, um, all my friends were rapping. Everyone. They're all just 
they had rap battles and shit. And we used to we used to contribute the rap battles to the East Coast. That was the only thing that we used to like praise. We used to be like, yeah, the East Coast they they do battling, battle raps. And, man, shit, let's we could battle. And then it was just like <laughs> <laughs> we just you know people tried it and it was tight. Got a lot of those recordings, man. They're gone. London yeah. gone now, but that's it. Those days were fun. Bootlegging all these uh, mixtapes and shit from our favorite. You know, our favorite crews. Man, hip-hop was fun back in the days. Hell yeah. So, when did I get into hip-hop? Oh, let me see, man. Uh, my dad used to party a lot when we were kids. So, you know, he was into a lot of music, a lot of hip-hop, plus him being from the East Coast or whatever. So, you know, it's always been around. If I had to stamp it, it'd probably be like, 82, 83, 84, you know? But um, as far as me, like personally getting into hip hop, uh, probably like 86, 87, Push It, Posse on Broadway, shit like that. But like when I really started liking rap, it's probably the, the DOC, is it funky enough? Something like that, but uh, yeah, man, this this is our old building right here. This is where it all started at. You know, this is like as far back as my memory goes. You know, 1600 block of Woodland, East Palo Alto. You know, and uh, yeah, this is where it all started. This is where my parents laid their head because, you know, my dad's from Connecticut and my mom's from Stockton. So, you know, they're not even really from the Bay. Me and my brother are from the Bay though, and this is where it all started. So, you know, that's why I'm here. When did you first get into hip hop? <laughs> I hope I ain't making you feel old. I ain't making you feel old, right? Hey, stop it. Just stop. Man, I gotta go way back, bro. Oh? Yeah, almost, uh, it's almost embarrassing, bro. Let me tell you. <laughs> 1990? 1990? You talking, talking about how many years? I'm not even answer that. Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, we rolling this so, over. Uh, I'm feeling old right now. Just give it, just give it out. But hey, you can't touch this. The, the hammer? Bruh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. You can't touch this. Yeah. Where we at right now, bruh? He was so big, Rick James was like, oh, yeah, we in Fremont right now, so. Fremont Hills, I can remember. You know, you know, you, you, you know, Hammer done went by this trip so many fucking times. You right. know. It was. Probably it was, Dion, too. It was amazing, man, in the 90s. You know, uh, them pants was crazy, bro. That's why you couldn't touch it. Them, you wasn't gonna no touch one's going to wear them goddamn Z-Cap. No one's going to wear them goddamn Z-Cavarichis. But, but, bro, it was so, it was just, man, I don't know. He turned into a preacher later. You know, that's just reflecting back on it. But, man, he had game. Yeah, he did. He had game. So that's that's what I'm saying is, is what's, what started me really. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Strutting it, you know what I mean? Hold up, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Yeah. <laughs>